Hello everyone, uh, my name is Elkoni Al Qadr. I'm a researcher at Green Building Engineering and, and Energy Efficiency at the School of Architectural Planning and Design. And today we will present to you our project concerning PV power output forecasting using artificial neural network. So as we all know, when the PV modules are exposed to uh, solar radiations, they provide us with the power. And this procedure of conversion is highly influenced by climatic conditions as an increase in the, the solar radiation will cause uh, gr big, uh, greater power, but is all, also um, uh, associated with the overheating of the PV uh, PV power uh, of the PV modules. So, this this uh, phenomena are always coupled together. The influence of uh, solar radiation and the temperature, and they have never been studied uh, together, but always separately. So, our goal is to generate uh, an artificial neural network capable of predicting the, the PV power plant output and including all these parameters implicitly such as cable losses, conversion losses and the PV power plant configuration. So in our case of study, we were working on a um, power plant that is located in El Qaria, uh, which is uh, in Morocco, uh, characterized by high solar radiations. And it is some uh, characteristic of the modules that we we'll use in this power plant. This is the following configuration. For more further details about the power plant, please consult Fathiz Amin's work. Our case, we were working on one of the inverters right here with two PV, uh, pa uh, two strings of eight PV panels. So we, we had 3,648 row of data set resuming one month of observations, and we used the PV power as, we, as long as we're working on a, a supervised machine learning, we use the, P, uh, the PAC as an output to the model, which is the target, and the input where the solar radiation, the cell temperature, and the ambient temperature. Both uh, all the parameters ha were having different ranges, so we needed to proceed and normalization to make them in the same range. And also, the output was, was uh, transformed using a log transformation, uh, to reduce its variance and uh, to um, make it uh, make it uh, um, in a small range. So uh, this is the correlation of the independent variables. Uh, each one has its own uh, um, correlation with the output. And uh, the, uh, the following, the B figure, it show, shows the influence of normalization on the, the variables. As you can see, they are all ranging from zero to one. Uh, we use the RMSC as an indicator of the fitness on the model, and the data was split to 70% training, 15% uh, uh, validation, and 50% testing. Uh, so we are aiming for a, a small amount, a small, a small um, value of RMSC during the training and also the validation. It is one of the experiences that we have done with um, a single uh, layer. Uh, to determine the optimum number of neurons. And for two uh, hidden layers, uh, we had to compute the RMSC values and, um, and evaluate it for different combinations. And after doing mini tests, we have found that the optimal um, configuration it is the following with nine neurons in the first line and 12 neurons in the second layer. So in, um, in the first stages of uh, the training of the model, uh, we tried to predict 12 hours of production. So we trained the model with the, the following data set. It wasn't the, the full data set. It was only 70%. Uh, and uh, the RMSC was ranging from, seven, uh, uh, from uh, 270 to 700. And uh, the correlation between the predicted and the output value wasn't like a uh, good correlation. It was spread, but even though the model was capable of predicting the evolution of the power, as we can see here, it is a zoom of this section. Sometimes it's overestimate and sometimes is underestimating. So the problem is loading the pro, uh, the, the machine learning model with too much data was causing to get confused because of the energy management of the inverter. So we decided only to train it with one day and predict the other day. So in this case, we compared between two days, the 25th of May and 18th of June. As you can see, the profile of temperature uh, of both modules and the ambient temperature was completely different and also the solar radiations. And yet, our model was capable of predicting the output of another day that wasn't introduced even in the training on valid or, or validation or test. So the model was capable of giving good predictions. And here is the correlation between the predicted value and the real value, as it, as it seems that in both validation and training, um, they have good correlation. And finally, we can say that our model give low error, good correction, a good uh, correlation, and good prediction. Here is some references that we we'll use in this work. And thank you.